Uh, guys, welcome to Capital Planning Meeting at 6.05 on February 1st. I'm going to call us to order. Um, this meeting is being videotaped, so under the open meeting law, I'm required to advise you that um, open session public meetings are subject to being recorded, and your image and voice will be uh, recorded in our joyous fun here. Um, so I want to start um, by saying that uh, I want to apologize to my committee members because we kind of got, I allowed us to get a little ahead of ourselves when it came to community preservation um, and not meet with each group and the projects that were going on with community preservation. And we did have some uh, miscommunications there among us. Um, so what I did was I, I spoke to Tim and then um, reached out to everybody who's got projects going on with community preservation. Um, so the first people that we're going to speak or hear from today uh, would be uh, conservation and then the agricultural commission. Um, and then I think I said council on aging. Is that the order I gave you, Victoria? I think so. Okay. Um, um, yes. You can do them first. I have to be two doors down at seven o'clock. Okay. So, and they're already sitting there and they're probably going to take less time than we will. So. Okay. Thank you. Well. Carl, Carl is far more concise than we are. Yeah. <laughs> so he's less trouble is what you're saying. By far. Okay, good. <laughs> he's got his act together too. <laughs> Um, okay, so the as far as we have done in the past, the community preservation slash capital planning um, process is convoluted and difficult um, because any project that the town is involved in that has a, a value of more than $10,000 is supposed to go through the capital planning process. But we have a very firm time schedule um, that was set up prior to community preservation being an entity. Um, and um, community preservation has a flexible time schedule. And so sometimes we overlap well, and sometimes we have what happened where we, we got a little off track from each other. Um, but so we would love to hear about your fencing, right? And um, what's going on with that? Okay. Yep. Uh, my name is Scott Wilson. I'm a member of the Agricultural Commission. This is Deborah Rowe. She's the vice chairman, and as well as the garden manager. So, uh, a little background. Approximately two years ago, I guess it was, we determined that uh, this would be an appropriate project to go forward with. Uh, we submitted an application uh, to the CPA committee in that general time frame. At the same time, there were other projects in the works. Those projects uh, were pursuing matching funding grants. So it was determined, I believe, by the CPA committee that it would be appropriate to fund those to maximize the dollar impact of the town. And that was certainly the right decision. Uh, at the same time, we were asked if we would stand by on this round uh, because all the money would be used <clears throat> for those other applications. So we agreed to that as well. Uh, in the uh, August time frame, this past August, we were invited again to submit our application to the CPA committee, which was submitted in September. In the meantime, we uh, asked our uh, one of the contractors to update their quote to us to reflect current pricing due to inflation, etc. And he did that, and that's what was uh, presented at the uh, meeting in September. I believe our application was uh, well received at that time. And uh, when we uh, presented it, we mutually agreed that we should add additional monies because it'll probably be another year before we make an award. So we did that and we rounded the monies up to what's reflected currently in the uh, application. <clears throat> I'm refraining specifically from mentioning the contractor we're dealing with in order to ensure the integrity of the procurement. So I will not mention it, but it's in the CPA document. I think you folks have a copy of it. So last evening, we met again with the CPA committee. Uh, I answered a few questions. Uh, 
I think uh, we still have their full support for the project, and uh, I believe it's their intent to have this on the May warrant for the town meeting. So that's the background. Uh, also, in parallel with this, we have prepared a procurement package, and that was sent to the town administrator back in, uh, I guess it was in January, for her review. So we want to be prepared as soon as the uh, town meeting is behind us, and assuming the town agrees with it, be able to go out and solicit bids. I'll be meeting with her on the 17th of this month to finalize that package so we'll be ready to go, uh, hopefully in the May-June time frame. As far as the project itself is concerned, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, based on the uh, contractor support that we got, there's going to be approximately <clears throat> 622 linear feet of uh, chain link fencing. It'll be black in color. Uh, that will encompass the primary garden area as well as the area around the uh, garden shed and the handicapped raised bed area as well as our other raised bed area that we have for us old folks who have a difficult time of you know, getting down on our hands and knees. So that will be all enclosed. <clears throat> the design will also include two double eight-foot gates at each end. That will allow for heavy equipment such as a farm tractor or a front-end loader from the town to get in there to either till or to remove a uh, raised bed that may have deteriorated <clears throat> over time. It will also include two four-foot gates, one at the handicap area and then one for the general gardeners to enter the garden. The fencing will be uh, seven feet in height, <coughs> Excuse me. one foot of which will be uh, below the, uh, the ground. The purpose of that is to keep critters out of the garden, four-legged ones. Uh, that will help with the production of the garden for the gardeners. Our gardeners do donate to the food pantry, so that will be a big plus. Of equal importance uh, is keeping the two-legged critters out. Okay? Uh, every fall when harvest time comes around, people seem to think they can just walk in and help themselves. Mm. So we want to stop that activity. And perhaps more importantly, I, uh, the fencing will provide uh, for protection to the town assets that are there. <clears throat> Back in December of last year, the select board asked us what we have down there for assets for purposes of updating the insurance requirements. So on the 21st of December, we sent them this list of everything that's down there, and we gave them an estimate. It's about two pages long. I'm glad to share it with you. We gave them an estimate at that time that the town property down there is somewhere between $23,200 and $27,950. Hmm. Now, I'd also like to point out that almost 100% of those assets were derived from two sources. Source number one being a state grant for $25,000 <clears> that we received about three years ago now, I guess it is. And secondly, through the generosity of gardeners and other Bruin citizens. So that's basically the program. I'd be glad to entertain any questions you might have. That was very concise. Thank you. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You're going to be, Mr. Wickstrom, you're going to be a hard act to follow for Farmer Tim. He might have wished he went first. I like it. So, like I said, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to. I'm only curious. It, yeah. I'm not sure it matters much to me, but. The more four-legged creatures that you see, are they more, do you think they're more deer or rabbit? Some well, it the, seems the, to me, uh, I think and perhaps Deborah can address that more specifically. <laughs> She's down there more often than I am, but I think it's the rabbits and the woodchucks, you know, they, they go into the garden shed and things of that nature. Uh, yeah. I think the, the deer population, I don't think it's been a, a big problem, but it's hard to tell, you know, exactly. But uh, <clears throat> this will certainly prevent that type of damage and it'll make it more enjoyable 
uh, for the gardener. It's nothing worse than, you know, waiting for that nice big pumpkin to ripen yeah. up and you walk in the next day and it's half eaten. You know, it's yep. pretty discouraging. Absolutely. Or gone so, completely. Or gone completely, yeah. yeah. I did fail to mention that the, with respect to the fencing design, uh, it will be uh, held up by uh, cedar posts as well, you know, appropriately spaced. So. And I, we did have, uh, if you have a copy of the CPA grant, there is a photo or two photos in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me see if I can find it, of the garden in Hudson, which this is sort of uh, tailored after. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't have it. All of the gardens that I've gone to look at as we've been building this up from the original garden 12 years ago have these kind of fences to, to protect. Mm -hmm. So that's why we fashioned it after the ones that we were seeing. Now, I know in my yard we have um, rabbit safe fence. That we, I don't know if that's the right word, but rabbit fence. So it's narrower at the bottom and bigger at the top. But is a chain link, I know it won't get narrower, but will it still keep out the rabbits even though it's yes, not quote unquote leave, rabbit fence? We believe it will. Uh, in the statement of work that we prepared, uh, we define the size of the chain link fence, mm, okay. which I think are two inch openings, as yep. I recall. So I think that was addressed in our statement of work. Otherwise, okay. chicken wire. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we do have a temporary <laughs> fence. In. I will so, say we have rabbit fence in our yard only because it was cheaper than regular fence. So We do have a temporary fence around the garden right now, but it's only about three feet tall. It's plastic. The animals are eating through it, and it doesn't keep the two-legged critters out. <laughs> um, what about gates? How, who will have, will there be keys or locks, and who so will have that? We have specified in the statement of work <clears throat> that the gate hardware, the latches in particular, have to be capable of accepting a padlock. Oh, we didn't ask them to include the padlock in their bid, but they will be uh, able to accommodate padlocks. And Deborah has come up with a great padlock that she currently has on the garden shed. It's a very easy combination type of padlock, so I presume we'll be investing a few dollars to get those once the gates are in place. And we work hard to train the gardeners, last one out, make sure that mm -hmm. everything's locked. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's not fail safe. <laughs> I assume you all are aware where the garden is located, okay, mm -hmm. down on River Road. So, you know, that's a very dense uh, area with population, heavy traffic. Yeah. So there are a lot of people coming and going that aren't residents of this town. We've had uh, problems in the past with uh, damage and stolen property. Mm -hmm. so. I can't believe it's been 12 years. Since yeah. it went in, mm -hmm. wow, that's crazy. And it's come a long way. Yeah, you know, last year, excuse me, during the growing okay. during the growing season last year, we had thirty eight participants. Oh, God. So, uh, how many? How many the first year? How's it grown? Well, it's been up and down, and, okay? and a lot of it is affected by the economy. Hmm. If the economy gets tougher. We seem to have more participants because yep. they can provide their own food. What has been a big boost to the garden. Uh, is our current irrigation system. We now have a well, it's under pressure, so there's no hauling of water. Mm. For the first uh, 10 years or so, we had a solar pump system, brought water up from the North Brook into two 550 gallon tanks, but the garden has had to you know, haul it from the watering cans from where the tanks were located at both ends into their individual pots. Now they can just run a hose in. So that's been a big plus, and I think it's had uh, contributed greatly to uh, people participating. <clears throat> and that was done part of the grant, as I mentioned earlier. Fantastic. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, mm -hmm. thoughts? Yeah, Eloise, I'm, I'm glad you joined us. Three or four times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, sounds great. All right, thank, thank you Thank you guys Appreciate very much. Oh, thank Tim's you. waving his hand in the air. Caroline reminded me that we did vote to support this and put it on the warrant last night. Okay. Thank Great. you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for your patience.
approach it. Fantastic. Thank you for coming. All right. Thank you. So this is upside down, of course, but this is Carter Street, Wheeler's Garage over here, Harris Road. Okay. This is the, the house at 72 Carter, and then there are eight and a half acres of land, as you can see here. It butts up against um, Wiedemann's, which comes off of Wood Carter, Woodard, Street, Woodard Carter. Carter Street, that way, and then this butts up against um, other Lindsay? properties. Where is Route six, or 62? Is, yes. This says Linda Sawyer. Yeah, yeah. that's 32 an old map. Yeah. Um, but it should, it, it abuts the base. That's, that's, that's Wiedemann. This is Wiedemann. Yeah, that's Wiedemann. Here. Right. 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 So it's Wiedemann and then Faith. Faith, yeah. And then Powder House. But Actually, and Wiedemann's butts up against Powderhouse's piece, which belongs to the town already. Oh, so this is the hill going up? This is yes. going up, right. Okay, okay. I see. I see. Yeah. What are we calling this project? 72? I think so. <laughs> just, just for my own. So, what's the, what's the deal? So, <coughs> one of the things, one of the objectives of CPA has been to try to um, forecast what projects might be coming forward. And our objective now is to have people submit applications by November 1st so it comes closer to your timetable. And then we, we wouldn't approve them for quite a while after that, but we could send them over to you so at least you knew they were on the radar. Right. We, we most likely won't approve projects until we get into January most years. That's our objective. Now, projects that float up to the surface that none of us know about. Yeah. For instance, this, this one. one. <clears throat> and because this one is recent, um, it's sort of it's it's changing all the time. Um, we still don't have it tied down the way we'd like to. There's an open space on the property, and there's a house. CPA is charged with dealing with historic issues, open space and rec, and community housing. So in this case, I think we saw an opportunity to deal with housing and open space at the same time. Mm -hmm. we, I think when we met with the Finance Committee, we suggested, and initially in our proposal to CPA, we, we talked about the possibility of setting the house that's there into motion so it could become an affordable unit, but potentially creating another lot that could accommodate another affordable unit or a duplex. There's only frontage for one unit, so in order to develop a second lot, you've got to develop a road, um, and, and that just becomes significantly more expensive and as a result, we sort of backed away from, from that option. Is so that's a, that's a proposal that was put forth years ago to suggest what would happen if you tried to subdivide the parcel. Um, and, and so on the open market, 
And fortunately, the owners have said they'd wait for the town's response at town meeting before they move forward to sell it if we don't approve it. Um, but that's the potential, essentially. Someone, and we've often said on the planning board, it's, you know, why would people build a small little subdivision road to create two or three lots? But it's done now. I mean, that's... People can afford to do it given the cost of a lot in town and the types of houses that are being built. And they're certainly not affordable houses, so the, you know, we're still trying to find a way to protect this as a potentially affordable unit. So the, the price for the property is $400,000. Um, we went through the property with um, Kevin Pond. And James Holyoaks, the realtor, so he went through with us. Carol and I walked through, and Kevin's response was, wow, this house is in far better shape than I anticipated, given its age. Um, so all the windows have been replaced, and the siding is vinyl and relatively new, and the roof is in good shape. Um, the foundation is solid. solid is, you know, the, the plumbing is reasonably new there needs to be some work on the wire and uh, most of the rooms were in pretty good shape the trim had been replaced when the windows had been done so a lot of that's new the the only thing that really needs a lot of work is the kitchen so that's this house here right that's yes. that house there so it's you can walk into the cellar which is unfinished um, the first floor is the living area and the second floor above the first floor is unfinished. So there's potential there for someone down the road to um, create more living space if they wanted to. It's three bedrooms, one bathroom, laundry on the first floor. So it's... Sounds it's got, reasonable. It's got yeah. potential. Yeah. It has passed Title V. Oh? Yep. That's we had, impressive. We asked James to check that out before we move too far forward. <laughs> so, if we were to take 100000 from CPA and address it as open space, it wouldn't come out of the open space fund this time. It would come out of the balanced reserve fund. But CPA has 10% of its money set aside on an annual basis for housing, 10% for historical, and 10% for open space and rec. We've, we've. Why would you take it out of balance reserve and not out of housing? Just, I just asking a question. This is the open space path. Well, it's, it's, it doesn't, a, it's a do, it's a two part. Well, just let them. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so a hundred thousand would come out of, would be assigned to open space. It's not going to come out of the open space account. It's going to come out of balance reserve. But and, for open space. But for open space. Because it'll be held by the town. And that would probably be about six and a half acres if we cut off the 80,000 square foot lot that it needs, which is essentially two acres. Um, that leaves six and a half that would be open space. And so we'd assign 100,000 out of what we dedicate as open space for that. And then in our designated account for community housing, we've got about $190,000. That's been put into that account for three years since we started CPA. And we haven't expended any of that. So there's about 190 in that, and that would all go toward the housing part. We've got money from mitigation that we've done over the years from like Cabell, well, Brook Highland Lane. Commons and Brook Lane and stuff that's gone into the housing partnerships hands and controlled by the planning board. So we've talked about spending 50000 out of that fund um, to assign to this project. And that leaves us about 50 short, so it means 250. So we take another 50 or 60 out of the balance reserve account to put us at about 250000 for housing out of CPA, 50 out of housing partnership for the house, and then 100 out of the... CPA for open space. Right now, 
we've generated about a million six hundred and fifty thousand in CPA funds between the state and the the surcharge, the fee that the town charges. And our projects thus far have expended somewhere around a uh, hundred and well, probably about a million one hundred and fifty thousand. So somewhere there there's a there should be about fifty thousand dollars, maybe a little less. That's not enough to take care of all the projects that we've got applications for this year, because the third one, of course, is the pavilion. We're, we don't have final figures from June yet, so we're going to hopefully figure out exactly what's in these different accounts when we meet with her sometime in the next couple weeks. And that'll help us do two things. One is um, get a more complete idea as to how much we can expend at town meeting. And then the committee will probably have to prioritize the projects. And if we can't recommend all three because we don't have the funding, um, we probably have to drop one. I think last night it was pretty clear that people felt this one had high priority because it, it doesn't, it can't be postponed, it has to be dealt with. If we, if we decide not to do it, then that's fine, but it ought to be put the, you know, to the voters and give them a chance to voice their opinion. Um, there's 867,000, what is it? 64,000 that's, <laughs> coming that's back. part of that grant that's coming back. Is that in your one million no. that you figure you just named? That's that's the one million mm -hmm. one hundred and fifty that we've spent. Mm -hmm. But eight hundred. It, it and it and it isn't part of the f close to five hundred that we think we've got. The eight hundred and fifty, if it comes back from the state in the next two months, um, June's report back from the state was that. It goes back to CPA, the 850 does, where the other 14,000 goes is probably to free cash. I don't think it goes to conservation. I think she made a deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it can't be used this year. It has to be certified. Mm, so it has to wait. It's so right. it has to wait. So, so it doesn't matter even if it comes back tomorrow. Correct. Yeah, when we talked to Stuart, um, our connection at the the CPA consortium, he, he he says only in Massachusetts can you spend money you don't have, <laughs> but you can't spend money that you do no. have. Federal government does that all the time. Yeah. So right. <laughs> we'll have this money in our account, but we can't expend it, and um, you know it's. Okay, I understand all this, but I don't understand the why. Why do you want this? Because I'm having a hard time wrapping around it, and I got a lot of people asking me. So that's that's the big question. I get affordable housing, but it's kind of irrelevant in Berlin because nothing's affordable because our high our our income is our affordable housing is based on our mean. Uh, right, so it would so, be so affordable for the town. F affordable for the town, which really a lot of people think is not still affordable. And I tried to explain that piece to help you. <laughs> uh, we have no, we have no way of like of saying, okay, this is going to be two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's going to be whatever the affordable housing is. And uh, so I think I got them straightened out on that piece. But the other piece is okay. Now we're taking piece of property that's taxable these are the questions that are coming to me yep, yep. that are taxable and we're going to do open space which isn't taxable and why do you need this piece of property because they're seeing that and a lot of people are seeing this as not a need but a want and I said it might be a want not a need but I'm I'm just asking the yep, questions because yep. I'm sitting here I would be happy to address those. Um, Sorry. So there's several 
reasons why we think this piece of property is worth mm -hmm. going through this. Um, one is it would be able to provide connectivity with the trails at Highland Ridge that go up and down. The, you could cross Carter Street and we could put a trail and either get an easement um, across Wiedemann, it would give access to Powder House, um, or we could get an easement from Faith Lindsay to be able to come down through the 1870. I'm going to stop you right there because yeah. that's what I told everybody because that's what I heard. Yeah. And they said, well, until we know these easements are going to be in place, we're not interested. And I'm like, well, you got to start somewhere. I, I right. understand, but I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just, this, so, is, right. this is what I'm getting. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm just going to, I'll ask the questions. Yep. So <laughs> that that's one thing that it could possibly do. It can also be, um, we could make it available for wells for municipal properties in the center of town. I think everybody seems to be aware that unit water in is so the church i know is having issues um if the 1870 town hall needs new a new water source um if at some point national lumber were to move out of that those hands and something more were to happen there they might need access to water um, so water source available in town that the town owns um, in the town center is in my mind a good idea okay I told them that so yeah. here's the question for this one yeah how much is a well gonna cost to put in and is it a viable I don't know. I said I have to call a well person. I've always I'm been just... told that a well is the cheapest part of developing a piece of property. <laughs> so <laughs> might be, but I don't know. I'm just asking the question again. Correct. I don't know either. I all I do know is that there's a need, and so no, it doesn't understand. matter. In not to sound flippant about it, but in some ways it doesn't matter what it costs because if there's no availability to put a well in for something then it could cost $2. Yeah, no, I, and, I understand. Um, so to have the ability to do that. But the other kind of key piece as far as community preservation is the scenic value. If you stand... If you, you don't if, have to tell me I anything I about you, it but, because but I've you, been there so a number of times. So if you stand on, <laughs> yep. in, in the backyard of the church and look at Powder House Hill, mm -hmm. If that happens, half of literally a line gets drawn and all of those trees get cut off, cut down to build houses. But do you think that this was, so this is another question, but do you think it's perkable? It's going to have to be a road? I mean, these are the questions I'm getting asked. And right. I well, think, certainly a road would have to happen. Correct. And... I've seen properties perk that everybody was like, that'll never perk. And well, I mean, I could I could list several right off without even having to think too much about it. It's pretty up there. It is. And, and it may not perk, but it might. Obviously, someone thought it would enough to go through the trouble of drawing up plans at one point. Um, so I don't know. I think there's a lot of unanswered questions that are that, so that I just that's why I'm asking because sure the, the but what we there are oh, there's always mm -hmm. unanswered questions um, again they're not my questions yeah no and, and <laughs> even if they were Janet that's fine <laughs> um, and and there are a lot of them are questions that we've come up with on our own also. Mm. Um, We don't know what will happen if mm -hmm. this property goes on the market, but we do know what will happen if it doesn't. Yeah, James Polio seemed comfortable with the notion that the property would sell very, very quickly and that the goal would be to put in a road and, and add a couple of big houses up in there. I got a postcard saying it was for sale. Yeah. I mean, it's, mm. 
We all got one, yeah. Uh, it's there and ready to go. So I'm confused looking at the map online. It appears, and my previous understanding had been that that little white bungalow across the street from 19 Carter and the library um, owns all the way back across So they own that six property. and a half. Yep. And, and when you look at this, the piece that says Sawyer, it's we Weedemans. Weedemans. No. This one. So those are the Weedemans so 30, with that. 32 Woodward, I yep. believe, is the address on that. Okay. So yeah, 32 little... Woodward owns the other half of the hill. Okay. They, they yeah. have seven and a half acres, and yeah. this is eight and a half. It's divided like that because that piece of property used to actually be two separate pieces of property, and it got put into one. So that's why it looks kind of funky on that map. I don't know when that was done. But so the... the 2007? Wiedemann property is not developable, wouldn't be developed. It's open space. At, what is the... It, the access... Well, if a road goes in here, it makes that one much more developable. developable. Right, because that little bungalow area yeah, would be right. hard to get into. Right. Um, right now, I believe the only access is where the house is. Yeah. So, uh, this says... Suggests that they have... Act, they have frontage west on west street it looks like yeah, i believe that's true across that's maybe from the old firehouse yeah it surrounds the town land over there yeah that, that's okay. in here right mm -hmm. but it's yeah not that a, one here you want to see it's not accessible in, the, in terms of getting okay there. so that's the little right. white bungalow and, get they there from that here. Yeah. Corner. <laughs> and this is and this is the piece we're oh, talking yeah, about yeah, is yeah. back there on carter street okay. so they abut backwards but so you're talking about getting trail access but or potentially, whatever, it, certainly getting in touch with them and seeing what they would want, what they would be interested in, what they would consider, um, now, if anything. There's a, I'm going to call it a road, but it's not really. <laughs> there's a cleared path that's road shaped <laughs> between 24 Carter Street, that White House up on the hill. Um, sort of behind their septic system, what I assume is their septic system, and the house next to them mm -hmm. in that space. And it goes, that road-like path, goes around and up the hill. Mm -hmm. That could very um, well be theirs. So that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that could be, it looks like 24 Carter has a has a chunk there, but I wasn't sure about it. So right. just for me to understand, these two houses would be then sold off? or Those two houses exist only on paper. That is a plan that was proposed for this okay. lot at one point, whatever the plans are. Only this one exists, yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's just to demonstrate the concept that it, it's been suggested in the past that it could be developed and two additional houses could be placed there. Okay. And that money would come back to town then? Well, the goal right now would be because Putting a road in and developing the two lots would be sort of counter to the notion of trying to protect the open space. Um, yeah. So that if we break off the single lot of 80,000 square feet for the house that's there and protect the other six and a half acres, okay. right. that house would be offered up uh, to a third party to be finished, refurbished, and then deed restricted so it had to be sold as an affordable unit to qualify for the mm -hmm. what someone earning 80% of the mean income could, could what is it 80 80% of, of the mean 80% I didn't and, know the exact and, figure and I thought it was 50 well they do have a 50 limit do they I thought it was 50 There's yeah 50. but they they have three tiers oh I didn't realize that right. okay what's the third one extremely low <laughs> that, that's what they refer to it as. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> so it's extremely low. I'm low, waiting for low a low number. Income. Oh, that's Modern too funny, income? Louise. Is that Eloise, that's too funny. Roughly 20%, 50%, and then 80% of the mean. Do we know what the mean income is <coughs> in Berlin? Is? She probably does. It's a, what? The mean what income mean? of Berlin. It was in the high. high. Yeah, it used to be in the high 80s. Now I imagine it's in the I think 90s. it's like 95. Right. 90, oh, I think it's over 100. 
the well, mean. Well, that makes the math. So and, oh, yeah. No, I still think it was, I think I looked it up the other day. Right. So I'm going to remember the number incorrectly. So I'm only going to say that the house would probably end up less than 350000 if it qualified as an affordable unit, which to me is arguably affordable in Berlin given what These everything days, else yeah. costs. Right. Because right. mm -hmm. James has said to us, he, he doesn't see anything in the threes hardly anymore anywhere yeah. in Berlin. And so nothing under three. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. Um, the goal would be to, to try to make that possible. And so as you sold it to a third party, you try to work out some number that would come back to CPA to go back into our um, housing fund. Hundred and four thirty-two. Oh, what's eighty percent of that? Uh, two, that's from the two thousand and twenty-two census. That's that's the. That's the average. Or the the median? median household income that's of Berlin median, households. Right. Yeah. Oh. In 21. So we're talking about what the 80% of the mean is. Yeah, so I, I'm only telling you what the mean was, so then I'll figure the 80% based on 104. It's about 80 grand. Yeah. So. <laughs> Can I just do it? The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the thought would be that um, we, we've got to figure out how to structure yeah. this in such a way that two pieces can be sold to two different types of programs in town. One conservation commission that might, you know, work through the normal channels that it does when it wants to protect land in perpetuity. The other that allows us to purchase a property, sell it, and deed restrict it in such a way that it goes into the lottery and mm -hmm. then um, becomes available as an affordable unit and shows up on our subsidized housing inventory. And gives the opportunity for a single family standalone home that's affordable. And I don't think we understand completely yet, because this is we've been talking to different entities, how we go about the second part of the equation. But that's what we're going to work on, you know, in the next couple of weeks, trying to figure out: is there a party that we could sell this to, or that could help us purchase it using our money, and then they would handle the deed restriction issues and the future sale, um, so the town didn't have to be burdened with that responsibility, because we're not proficient in that. Um, the Housing Trust, Eloise included the notice that the vacancies are open in, in the census, and the select board is, has announced it, and they'll be appointing people, and we've got a good group of folks that are interested in serving. So, that group would be formed and be able to participate in this discussion, which would be great because they can really devote themselves and focus on housing. And as an opportunity, this would be a good way for them to engage in the whole process of you know, how do you go about maintaining affordable units. Sometimes there might be a, a tax title piece that the town might um, take on and, and it might very well end up being a, a residential unit that could be put into the SHI and protected that way. There might be vacant lots that we could give to Habitat for Humanity and you know so those are all different but we, that there's a learning curve that has to take place and the opportunity to start that seems to make some sense. Are there other I'm going to call it immediate needs in Berlin that housing, CPA housing money could be spent on? Well, no. <laughs> because that we, would be my guess. Because we right, don't that, know, right? right? Because we haven't done anything to it because we don't have the appropriate committees to, committee to, to investigate right. that. That's right. the point That's of the, the point. Trust. Exactly. Yeah, yeah um, I get it. Yeah. This, right now we're generating around 600000 a year in CPA money, so 60 automatically goes to housing. So that fund will be available on an annual basis. Um, other towns do things like rental assistance during 
We've got things like COVID where people, you know, so they jumped in with some small amounts of money just to help people get through. Um, first time home buyer assistance is, is a possibility sometimes to help people qualify for that affordable unit because they don't quite meet all their criteria. Mm -hmm. um, and then aging in place, which I think has a lot of appeal here in town when we did the housing um, questionnaire. So, yeah, yeah. Senior, not senior housing per se, but trying to keep people in their homes was, was important to folks. Yeah. And we as a town. Particularly the smaller homes. Yeah. yeah, we as a town in Worcester, in southern Worcester County, for Central Mass's region, we were the second oldest of the 40 towns that we represent, which may have changed with River Bridges Apartments. But I was looking at those numbers the other day, and there's a lot of folks in there that aren't what I call young. Um, so it may not drift as much below where it is right now. So we're an old town mm -hmm. on an interstate highway that has a lot of youth on it. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of an anomaly in mm -hmm. a way. Um, but people like this town, they want to stay in the town, and they want to age in place. And that's continuing to be a a battle cry so I think you know if we can find ways to use CPA money to help retrofit thresholds and doorways and ramps and you know stuff like that to keep people in their homes um, that have you know monetary need that'd be great so that's what we know I have to know. go in like three minutes <laughs> um, any more questions for conservation the conservation portion of it before I leave you in Tim's hands. <laughs> I think we've said that all those houses in Carterville are on postage stamps. They and are. Any opportunity to pre prevent a parcel of land that butts up against them from being turned into more housing um, probably makes sense. I mean, it helps. It, it adds value to their homes probably um, with that open space there. Um, <coughs> and I think as Carolyn said, um, we're not protecting all the hill yet, but we're protecting, you know, ha more than half of it essentially. So an opportunity like that isn't going to come along again. I, I think it, without doing something now, we really lose that chance, and the likelihood is that it'll be developed. And so I'm going to ask the last, it's 400000 but you're still missing how much? That's my question. How much? Money we, to make it work. No, we have it. You have it? Yeah. Oh. 100 so from conservation, 250 from the affordable, from the housing. So 200 from from the housing fund. That's I thought you said it was 190 Yeah, it's 190 I'm just doing. Yep. I don't know if that figure is accurate because there's ten thousand dollars that's come in an additional funding that June didn't recognize. And then fifty from <coughs> fifty from mitigation. From the housing partnership. And then so that's and then where's and then the other fifty is going to be from the balance reserve. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I had it right. Yep. So it's so I can go back to my. So in room. rough numbers, it's like 150 from balance reserve, 200 from housing, and then 50 from the partnership, and it gives us the 400. And if we need a little more to deal with the logistics, then you know the housing partnership fund. Is and if we use enough. this money for here, one of the other projects is not going to happen. Is that correct? There's a possibility. Um, We're still trying, trying to get final numbers. It given the final number yet. Right. Okay. So we, we did. And do, we, do you have an idea which one it would be? The fence would not be on the list. I think uh, we, no, it would not be on the list to be bumped. I think the feeling was that we bumped the fence before. No, um, I, I, right. I was, I'm just asking. Yep. And that, yeah. that that one probably so then, deserves okay. an opportunity to move forward. Right. And, and I think the committee clearly saw merit in the pavilion and would support the pavilion on this warrant if the money's there. Um, but it, we talked about the possibility of, of uh, staging the pavilion, but it's a difficult project to stage. You really need to do the pad and the building at the same time. Right. Um, and we, you know, we talked about the possibility of 
you know, if if we were short twenty thousand dollars or something like that, what would we do? And and I think the feeling that there again was let's let's hold off. Um, but the committee hasn't voted, so that you know that's not a final verdict from the committee just yet. The pavilion. Um, it's a good project, and and they, uh, we we suggested they come back with a, a building with a little more cost, and they did, and, and we like the looks of it. Um, it's situated well. It would serve the tennis courts and the pond and the playground and everything. Would be great. So. Um, so we have to go. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Please? No. Okay. Right. Sounds Thanks. lovely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you guys so much for sharing. <laughs> and, uh, I guess we look forward to talking to you more as well, that's things the goal. change. Yes. In general, we look forward to talking to you more always. So for those who may or may not be aware, I am Victoria Flynn. I am the Council on Aging and Social Services Director here in Berlin. I've been here a little over two and a half years. And the uh, capital request project that has been put before you between uh, Council on Aging and Social Services is the idea of creating a multi-purpose or a community center here in town. Now, I will say that the facts and figures that are here are basically on a preliminary basis at this time. Um, for FY23, what we're doing is uh, I've been partnering up with the select board and with our town administrator to get out a community needs assessment to all Berlin Berliners uh, through UMass Boston. And this assessment is really going to be our gauge as to seeing how the town as a whole feels, social services, and uh, the town is like serving its, its residents at this point. In that survey itself, there will be a couple questions asking about, you know, the thought of a community center, just to again get general interest from the town. Kristen has confirmed that she is working on a proposal uh, to get a feasibility study done of all of the buildings, uh, municipal buildings and properties in town, just to assess how, what basically what status they are all in. The thought would then be based on that information we would then proceed forward looking more to see if any of these buildings could be retrofitted, if any of the land that the town already owns could then be used and designated for a multi-purpose community center. I do know that the town already has 1870 and 19 Carter. They are both lovely buildings. They are not gonna meet the needs of what I think a community or multi-purpose center really needs in this town. Both, uh, both buildings are in the center of town with not great parking and they're not necessarily easily accessible. Yes, they both technically have, you know, the ADA requirements, but for example, you know, we would love to have something where we could do a kitchen, where we could potentially even produce meals for our residents and have maybe even a gathering center, like some of the other local senior centers or other community centers already have in place. We also would love to have a place in town where we could have people of all generations come and gather where we could adapt something that, again, you know, during the day it may be used more for the senior population while they're home. But if it's something then, you know, like once school gets out and, you know, we can have a place where teens can come and go, you know, and feel free to gather safely, we would love that. I think at this point, um, like I said, a lot of this stuff is very much preliminarily, you know, on a preliminary basis, and that realistically, like, you know, we're still looking at least two years out before we're really gonna be looking at any tangible funding but I do want it on capital planning's mind because I do see Berlin grow and I see Berlin wanting to continue to grow and wanting to get in families and wanting to you know, truly hone in on what makes it special. But I think almost every other city in town around has some kind of gathering place for its residents. And I don't want that to be a factor that's gonna deter people going forward. Um, any questions? Have you brought this to the Finance Committee yet? As of yet, no, because what we're trying to do is, um, they, like everybody knows about the community needs assessment. And then what the idea was is that once we knew what the building, what the basically the feasibility study of, was 
of all the buildings, then we could pursue it further with finance and all the other committees at that point. No, but have you even broached the subject to the finance committee? No, because at this point, it's at this point, I, I'm. It's almost like an incomplete. I don't have enough data yet to show them because, like I said, if we could use and like if we could retrofit one of the buildings that the town already owns, or if we could use land that the town already has, that's what we would want to do. But we don't. It's just an incomplete data at this point. Did the Council on Aging vet this request? We have t I have talked with them about this, yes, and I have also spoken with our previous and current town administrators about this. So. Yeah, but I'm talking, you work for the Council on Aging. Have they voted? They're, they're aware, they want to explore this as well, um, as a whole. I, like I said, at this point, I think we need to see if this is even viable. But, you know, the Council knows that the room that we have downstairs is not enough. If we want to continue to grow and continue to meet the needs of the seniors especially, downstairs is not enough. So I know last year, last year? Was it mm -hmm. last year or the year before? You made this? Last year. Yeah, for requesting it. Um, and we said that it sounds like a good idea, but the feasibility study of the right. of the town's and buildings. And unfortunately, we weren't, the feasibility study wasn't able to be carried through last fiscal year, which is why I'm saying like this year, it's, right. the, it's the info gathering of the community needs assessment plus the feasibility study. So I, right. like I said, because this is going to be a project that I know will take multi years, I wanted it on your radar now. Um, the feasibility, um, the community needs assessments already being paid through by ARPA, so that is already all set. And then Kristen's working on the feasibility proposal. So, what, like I said, once those are both completed, then we can come back and give you more um, concrete figures. I would love to use a building that we already own as a town and see, like, if it could be renovated and retrofitted to accommodate all of the needs. I, but I have no, I have no clue what condition any of these buildings are in, and. Study. Not sure <laughs> many of us have any idea. Um, but yay, study. I'm excited. I'm super excited about that. Yeah, you've been talking about this forever. I've been, it's been my thing. Um, so I'm so glad we're moving forward with it. I just, I think too with COVID, we've, the world has obviously permanently changed since COVID. And, you know, while we have been able to make some gains in some respects in terms of like mental health awareness and things like that, I think a lot of people have now become very fearful of gathering. And as we know, with especially like depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues, knowing that you are part of a community and that you have, you know, you have a connection to others is really a huge driver to prevent, you know, anything mm -hmm. from necessarily progressing forward. And, you know, so having a place in town where we knew that people could come, could gather, they wouldn't have to worry about parking, they wouldn't have to worry about going uphill or having to worry about, um, you know, any kind of like mobility access that people could just come hang out, you know, we can have our activities there. It can be obviously open to town wide, it can be open to other departments as well. So, you know, if say for example, you know, the rec wanted to do something that could be accommodated or, you know, if public sa safety needed a place that again, t could hold a lot of people, you know, it, it is something that I think it could potentially benefit every single person in town. Um, and there would be ways to potentially generate revenue back um, again, knowing that this would be an investment for the town. Like mentioned previously, I know at the North Borough Senior Center, they have a kitchen that they basically do lunches for their residents most days of the week. Sometimes they even do dinners as well. They charge its revenue back in for the town. Um, you know, we can host, we can, if it's a big enough area, we can have, you know, bigger um, meetings there. Like, for example, like a town meeting, or we could have bigger meetings there because as of right now, it is really difficult to try to get more than 50 people in a room anywhere in this town unless you're looking at the school. Um, just because, just looking at parking and just, again, just the size of it, there's really no good place. Either that or I guess the movie theater. But, you know, again, just logistically speaking, it would be nice to be able to have some place where, you know, we could have everybody be able to gather, everybody be able to use it for you know various needs. And again, it, it this would be open to all. Um, I do think that there would be a way to get it to get seniors involved, and I do think that there would be a way to get it to get you know more families and you know give a place for teens, preteens to be able to be involved as well. You know, we do have the connection with you know the town does have the connection with Asabet. 
I, I think that there could be a draw there as well, giving, you know, giving the students the potential to do some community service, doing some more collaboration intergeneration, with intergenerations. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is definitely a project that is gonna be down the road. It's not a tomorrow project, like a, a lot of the other proposals that you guys have considered. But I just, I think that it is something that really truly could benefit this town and help continue to make it shine. How, how, how big building or space do you envision there? Well, that's a good question. I think to really have a building, it doesn't, I'm not necessarily worried about the square footage of it per se. I think it's more what the building could entail. Obviously, we would want a building that would be able to uh, be ADA compliant so that way people with, of all walks of life would not have to worry about being able to get in and out of it. Right. A place that obviously we could get a decent sized parking lot in. Like I said, we would love to have a place where we could have a kitchen with it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does it have to necessarily be all on one floor? No. If there was a building that was two floors that could be converted in, lovely. But I don't necessarily think it has to be a building that is huge. I just think it's just looking at where, where could we start. Because hypothetically speaking, we could find a building in town, start it with where it's at currently, and then if down the road the needs change and it needs to be renovated, that could potentially also be considered as well. Yeah. I was the chairman of Northbrook too, and getting a community kitchen through DEP was extremely painful. <laughs> they would not let us have a commercial kitchen. I think that that is going to be a challenge. I'm glad I have, you're in yeah. for understatement. Yeah. <laughs> I do think, though, it's not impossible, though. While it will be a challenge, it's not impossible. Northboro just renovated and got a new senior center not that long ago. They have a beautiful community kit. They have a beautiful commercial kitchen. Chances are it was done and it, it was grandfathered. If for any reason we couldn't necessarily get a community kitchen, it's not going to be a make or break. I think one of the biggest problems that we're seeing as a council is that we, re we currently are relying on Meals on Wheels through Mock. It's making opportunity count out of Fitchburg. So what they're doing is they're cooking meals and they're delivering it to us that we then dispose out to our residents. And sometimes our deliveries have been off. Sometimes, you know, we, it's, it, it hasn't been a smooth process because we are at the very end of their catchment area having them come down to us has been a challenge. I think if we could get any kind of um, if we could get any kind of area that we could even help to prepare meals, even help to keep meals. They did allow us to make a party kitchen. Okay. Which is basically you have to bring stuff in. It, it can be catered. Right. Similar to um, the town hall. So. I think that it's it's going to be one of those ones that we're going to have to just, if we can do it, great. If we can't, even just knowing that we can have a gathering place where we even may be able to allow by the Board of Health to heat meals and have a kitchen in that sense, I think that that would still be a win. Because as of right now, we, we really can't do much of anything. I know Maynard has a beautiful open table. Have you been over? I haven't yet, no. Pretty, but I've heard good things. Pretty impressive. Yeah. It's an open table. Um, it's what they call their community. Um, mm -hmm. They do meals every day mm -hmm. um, in a, a commercial kitchen and serve a number of communities. And um, they also have a food pantry that serves their own residents. And then this open table serves an, kind of like mock. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Any other? Thoughts or questions, Victoria? I'm done. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Victoria. Thank we you. appreciate your time. What time is it? Ten past. It is ten past seven. Oh, you have to go? It's That's my meeting. Nice. No, I, oh, yeah, meeting I, I had to right? stand up because I'm having a hip issue. Oh. Is the finance committee meeting tonight? Mm -hmm. What yeah. time am I supposed to meet with them? 
Um, I think you're first. Because <laughs> I'm second. <laughs> Like right now, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you weren't here, but I accidentally left all of my stuff at work in my bag on my desk because I, someone, so came, everything's normal. Someone came into my office as I was locking up, and I walked out with them and left everything there in a little pile. Yep. <laughs> One of those days. One of those days. Yep. Yeah. Um. So for capital planning, we still don't have numbers yet, not that I've heard in no. the last 48 hours. Um, so we can't really make any decisions just yet, either way. I don't um, think so. No. Do we have another planned date? We do not. That might take us a while to plan. <laughs> uh, I, personally, I, I think it's a waste to me until we have the numbers. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. So... The only <coughs> thing that I disagree with you on, let me rephrase that. I completely agree with you, except, <laughs> um, except that uh, if there are um, capital requests like the CPA that we had not met with um, that need to be met, or Council on Aging, we hadn't met with them, that need to be discussed. So cable access... We still haven't. Um, We've got all their paperwork. We do, but it sometimes it's good to hear it hear it again, and maybe it brings up a question. Has there um, been any changes, Roger? No. Okay. Yep. Done. I still think no. I still. I'm going to insist. I still think we should meet. Um, well, fine. We'll meet with Cable the day we get all there, our numbers. There you go. Um, I feel like there's one more. Oh, the. The pavilion, right. if there's a pavilion. Um, so, but certainly we can meet with both of those people once Same we know time. our numbers. I have no, I, have, I, I agree. There's no point in discussing when we can't really discuss. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't have any idea when that that information is going to come out. I don't. Eloise might have more of a finger on the pulse. Or it's, to anybody? the best of my knowledge, it's in the hands of the Department of Revenue, and we just have to wait till, till it they works come. its way through. Mm. As yes. Yeah, and it's late. I mean, we're supposed to have met with the, the select board two days ago and turn in our report. If we had the numbers, if right. everything, if it was a normal year, we would have done that. Dare I ask why it's not a normal year? Yeah, because the the tax bills were late. late. Everything was late. Everything Everything's was late. been delayed. Yeah. Okay. Um, as soon as I get wind of anything, I will notify you. Okay. So why don't um, we wait until we hear from Eloise? Yeah, or, it's fine. or you get wind of something yeah, being in FinCom. Um, she'll know before us. <laughs> not necessarily. Really? Yeah. Because everybody figures somebody told me, so they don't bother telling me. Oh. As a result, nobody tells me. That's fair. Um, fire, do we have a new fire chief? I believe we yep. do. Yep. And do we think it's worthwhile to chat with him, him I assume, um, about the previous fire chief's requests for funding? Uh, I, I have a hard time thinking today's his first day on the job that he would be in a position to, to have any idea. Yeah. Yeah. I I would I would tell a story that when Chief Clark came on staff, I was on capital planning at that point in time and the previous fire chief had made requests um for moving forward. And we decided in capital planning at that time to give the new fire chief time to decide what his department really needed before we right. at capital planning approved Then we things. can add him. He can be the third person that we meet with whenever we have our Oh, I, I just mm -hmm. meant, you know, he might need more time than one day <laughs> or, yeah. or a month. Um, so just something to think about. It's not a bad suggestion. It's mm. just... 
Yeah, yeah. They no, gotta get their feet wet. Yeah, I, I can't imagine coming into a job doing it for a day, a month, even maybe six months, and then having somebody go, "What do you need? You tell me right now." The three things. Well, you, you need. might want to introduce yourself and then tell yeah. him at some point within the next month, we will meet with him. Right. Okay, I could sell it, send him the previous chief's chief's clerk's mm-hmm. request and ask him to yeah. to confirm to, that it's viable. To that, that consider big request just throw it in the trash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start all over again. Yeah. Yep. 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 Don't even imagine that it's way too much money. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's just my opinion. It's not on this year's request, so we can't oh, talk about it. I yeah. mean, we can talk about it, but it doesn't matter. Hmm. Um, can I go? I'm supposed to open at 7. You can go. Thank you. Oh, no. can, we can adjourn. I'm, can yeah. we adjourn? Yes, yes. Let's adjourn okay. seven sixteen p.m. Um, that way. We don't have oh, anything exciting. Say, I think we have to adjourn improperly, though. Second motion. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Does sorry. somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Yeah. Seconded? Yes. Okay. I therefore declare us adjourned. It's 717 now.